Clyde, Lynn Goldfarb and Allison Sotomayor, and Assistant Professor of History at Pasadena College, Dr. Christopher Jimenez E. West. There's a cross for you to bear. Things to go if you going anywhere. Thank you so much, everyone. It's um it's an incredible honor to have this many people, to have such a wonderful crowd here, to, to not only celebrate the, the, this film, Bridging the Divide, but also to celebrate the life of Tom Bradley, the life and legacy of Tom Bradley. Before the panel begins, we want to share some of our, just some of our thoughts about making the film. But first, we want to thank Raphael Sun and Shine, who and his wonderful staff and partners who helped put on this wonderful event tonight. And we also want to acknowledge and thank the many people in the audience who helped us in the film, our wonderful team, our wonderful filmmaking team. Some, many of the people who are interviewed who appear in the film are here in the audience. And a number of our funders are here as well, so thank you. So I grew up in Los Angeles, and that's really the reason that I decided that I embarked on this documentary with Allison. I, growing up in LA, I remember Los Angeles as being a white, conservative, provincial city. And then I watched it change, and I wanted to understand how that change occurred. And that change was Tom Bradley. And I realized that nobody really knew Tom Bradley's story. And as a filmmaker, as a documentary filmmaker, I really wanted to go and look at how we got to where we are today and to understand Tom Bradley and his role in changing Los Angeles. I also was in, in great admiration because I remember the late 60s and how difficult with the protests, the anti-war movement, the police brutality, and how Tom Bradley had the courage and the conviction to run for mayor. So it was just always an amazing story to me and a story that I felt needed to be told. Tom Bradley's legacy is about coalitions, it's about inclusion, it's about changing race relations, it's about making Los Angeles the wonderful city that we are today. And it's about his influence on other politicians throughout the country, seeing that here in Los Angeles, a black man could become mayor in a city where African Americans were only 18% of the population. He influenced politics throughout the nation. And as Wanda said, you know, when we, what laid the foundation for the election of Barack, President Barack Obama. Filmmaking is a collaborative process. It takes a village. And again, I want to thank the people that participated in it. And now I want to turn over the, the, the microphone to my producing partner, who Allison and I seven years ago started on this film. And I think that we overcame insurmountable odds because we're independent filmmakers. We never had the support of an institution, of a company, you know, anybody giving us the money, you know. We were never employees of anybody, but we believed as independent filmmakers that we would do whatever it took to tell the story and make sure that this film would be completed and would be out there. Here it is. Thank you, Lynn. Um, in 2008, when we embarked on this journey um, of fundraising and producing for the film, it came as a big surprised to us that Tom Bradley's life and legacy was not being taught in our schools, that his life and legacy was practically omitted from our history books, and that the Tom Bradley-Barack Obama link had yet to be widely acknowledged and recognized. And that 
realization to Lynn and I was incredible. We turned around and said, well, then what does that mean about his legacy? His legacy at that point, we felt, was being forgotten, was distorted, and very much misunderstood. So it became even more pressing for us in 2008 to get this documentary done. So my hope for this film is that this film becomes a catalyst for dialogue, a catalyst for organizing, network and community building, and civic action. Um, I, I also hope that this film raise more, raises more than just the public awareness of critical issues like police brutality, police reform, race and race relations, but it also results in some real positive change, real action, because sometimes talking is just not enough. We must demand policy reform to make change. So I hope when you walk away, thank you. I hope when you walk away this evening that the idea that bridges can be built and people can coalesce can offer and create hope. So those community organizers in the, in the audience whose mission is one of social justice, I urge you to use this film in your organizing as a tool. For the educators and teachers in the audience, I urge you to use this film in your classrooms because frankly, young people, students have to wrestle with the issue of race as well. So they have to be part of this conversation. So with that said, I want to say a sincere and humble thank you to, of course, the Pat Brown Institute, but also to our scholars, our academic scholars. On this particular film, there were 13 of them located locally and nationally, and they helped guide Lynn and I and shape the film to one in which we believe is thoughtful and, and pretty much engaging too. And without their help, we could not have gotten this film done. So thank you to Raphael Sonenshine, who is one of our key scholars, as well as Christopher Jimenez West. And I know Fernando Guerra from LMU is also here, thank you. But without these scholars, we could never have gotten this done. So our sincere thanks to our scholars. And now I turn the mic over to our dear friend, Christopher. You never want to hand a faculty member a microphone. Um, as an urban historian, I first met Allison and Lynn when I was getting my PhD at USC. And they gave me, first and only African American man to get a PhD from USC. Sorry, UCLA folks, they were giving me some money. Um, <laughs> They gave me an opportunity to play filmmaker, which is an opportunity to tell a story. And if there's anything I want to do first and foremost is just to, again, one more time, humbly, humbly, because if there were two people who were on this project from the beginning, we come in, we come out, we give them some narrative and story, but at the end of the day, you've got to have filmmakers who are committed to the story, who are committed to the project who believe that it's more important, no matter what money, no matter how long it takes, to make sure the story is told, and that is Lynn and Allison. Lynn and Allison. <laughs> the other thing that's important to think about when it comes to Bradley is that he emerged from an African-American community of excellence. He's not an anomaly. He's not a one-off. He's extraordinary. He is excellent. But he comes from a community that expected excellence, that expected him to move forward, that expected its young people to not merely be OK, to not just be good, but to be great. And if there's anything that we're going to take away from the Bradley story that I hope that you take away tonight, it is that this is not a one-off. This is not one Negro who happened to do well. I say Negro because when I was born in 1966, that's the name on my birth certificate. So it's important then to understand that that community nurtured, that community supported, organizations like Kappa Alpha Psi, the church, these are all organizations that said, we are going to support him as he moves from the mayor of the city of Los Angeles. That he went for the possibility of being governor, that he then served for five terms. 
And if there's anything to take away, it's also about to take that story out to young folks. Because there is a Mayor Bradley terminal, but why aren't there more landmarks for Tom Bradley in this city that he helped to build? If you look at images of the city of Los Angeles when he comes in in 1973 and look at images when he left, the landscape of this metropolis is built by Tom Bradley, and yet we name a whole bunch of institutions and a whole bunch of buildings and a whole bunch of situations for other people, and yet Bradley only gets a few. And if there's something that hopefully that we are going to spur, it's like if naming institutions and monuments mean anything, it forces people to ask the question, so who is this guy? And why are we naming buildings after him? And we're naming buildings after him because he helped to shape the environment. He helped to shape the metropolis. He made the city what it is. It is our honor, and thank you.